Sola returns show us some of the biggest, most important energies and experiences that we'll be having in the entire year ahead. In this tutorial, I'm joined by the beautiful and talented Shanna Cross, and we're going to take you step-by-step step through the most important things to focus on in your own solar return chart so you can understand what's coming up. Thank you, Shanna, so much for being here. For those of you who don't already know Shanna, she is a brilliant professional astrologer. She's also one of our teaching assistants in the Cosmic Academy. Academy of Astrology. And um, yeah, today you're going to get a little bit of a taste of sort of a mini lesson of something that we have already taught and continue to teach our students in the Academy, which by the way, right now is open for enrollment at a 20% discount and you get three bonus courses. We'll talk about that a little bit more at the end, but the links down below, just in case. Anyway, Shanna, thank you for being here and welcome. Thank you for having me. It's always so much fun to connect with you, Heather. Yeah. And it's going to be, this is going to be a fun little talk, but before we get into it, for those who are not familiar with you and your work, uh, just walk us through a little bit about your background and kind of your focus, your area of focus in astrology too, because I think that's relevant. Yeah. So I, um, I've been a practicing astrologer since the world kind of went sideways in 2020. Right. That's kind of like that. That seems to be a theme with um, a lot of the charts that I have that I use for the Cosmic Academy in the, uh, my teaching assistant sessions. And uh, yeah, I just I said, you know what, there's no time like the present. Everything's all crazy. People need help. They need guidance. They need, you know, they need somebody to help walk them through some of the tougher energies that are going on. So I said, why not? Let's just get out there and help them. So I launched my Instagram and my business page and it's, I've been going ever since. Yeah, absolutely. And also you happen to be just a naturally gifted teacher and presenter as well, which is super useful for what we're doing here today. <laughs> yeah. And three years I've been uh, helping you with the Cosmic Academy of Astrology now. So yeah. that's been fun watching students grow and learn watching people have those light bulb moments those ahas and understanding how their chart what's represented in their chart and how to work with that energy it just it makes me so excited and so happy it's like yes you got it yeah <laughs> I love that part too. So, um, yeah, I'm super, super glad that you're a part of the Academy and I'm glad that you're here with us today in the YouTubes. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to make you host so we can jump right into the presentation that you've created. Awesome. All right. Okay. So let us know when you're ready to share. I am ready. And here we are. So yeah, we're talking about solar returns today, which are super fun. Um, it's definitely, like you said, the biggest energy for the year ahead. Um, and what's going on in a solar return chart is super important, especially for dayborns. Um, nightborn, yes, but definitely dayborn people, for sure. So we'll jump into the whys and the what's. So for solar returns, um, I have listed out here some of the important things to look at and take into consideration when looking at a solar return. And I like to personally look at solar returns independent of the birth chart mm -hmm. just to get a kind of um, like a layout of the energies that are present in the solar return itself. And because you want to look at them as an event chart, right? So it can either be themes throughout the year can pop up for sure. Um, but generally speaking, I find a lot of the times it's like a really powerful singular event that happens in a person's life that sets them on a trajectory or on a path. I don't know yeah. if that's what you think as well. Well, yeah. And that will show up in the solar return chart. So kind of the biggest events of the entire year will be yeah. shown with the themes that come up in the solar return. And so, yeah, I mean, that's absolutely how I look at it too. I look at the solar return as its own chart um, that describes basically the story of your upcoming year, like the major chapters of that story. And then yeah. I also look at it in the context of the birth chart to get additional detail, which is something that obviously we teach our students in the academy to do as well. Um, but this presentation, I'm assuming, is going to be focused just on the solar return chart itself, correct? Uh, mostly. So we're going to look at the solar return um, and we're going to evaluate the solar return chart. And then I'll, I have a, another slide showing how it hits the birth chart. 
Okay, perfect. So, and it's and the, the reason I do that is because there's some important things that are going on in terms of transits to the birth chart at the time of the solar return. So I wanted to show how it can manifest for sure. All right, perfect. So let's get into what are the top, what is this, five things that everyone out there in YouTube land should be looking at or focusing on when it comes to interpreting their solar return chart so they can get the most out of it. Yeah. So first and foremost, it's a solar return chart. You're looking at the sun and everything that the sun is doing. So the the themes that's going on with the sun. So the house placement is going to be super important. That's kind of where things are going to be lit up and that's where the focus is going to be. Uh, and then aspects uh, to and from the sun are going to be super important to look at because that's going to give you kind of the breakdown of easy you know, the sextiles and the trines or the kind of harder things that are going on, which would be the squares and the oppositions. Um, and you want to look at the solely lunar phase. So you want to look at whether or not the sun and the moon are making aspects to each other and what aspect that is, like where we are in the, the lunar cycle of the solar return, because that's also going to give you information as well as to what's going on. So give us an example of some of the lunar phases for those who are not familiar and kind of what they might represent in the solar return chart. So if someone has a solar return, they see, hey, I have a new moon or I have a first quarter square. What does that look like for them in terms of the repercussions or the events that might happen in the year ahead? Yeah. So for so when it's a new moon in the chart, depending on if the moon has already come into the exact conjunction and moved on, right? It depends on which side of the sun the moon is on, whether or not it's going to be a letting go year or whether or not it's going to be a seeding year, right? And by seeding, I mean seeding the intention. Something brand new is coming into that person's life or they themselves are doing something brand new, right? Or they're letting go of a previous cycle. Yeah. So a lot of the times it's both. Um, and a first quarter square, I mean, that's kind of, that's a, a crisis of momentum and a crisis of movement. Like there, you've seeded the intention and now there's action that's needing to be taken on it. And there's things that need to be done in order to fulfill that, what, what's happened at the new moon prior to the solar return chart. Okay. And then what about the full moon? So yeah, the full moon is awesome. The full moon is a completion, a finalization, a reevaluation, right, of everything that you've done, something big, exciting. Um, it can be, you know, positive or negative, depending, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a completion of some kind. Something is coming to fruition. It's like, like you've planted the garden and now all of a sudden you have all of these flowers that are bloomed if you've planted a vegetable garden all the vegetables are ready to go and you need to you need to to decide what you're going to do going forward right like it's evaluating this is what I've done and so th these are the results that have happened because of that and now I need to figure out what to do going forward whether or not you want to release something or whether or not you want to continue on doing what you're doing yeah, and then, absolutely. And like one of the things yeah. I've noticed is that that tends to be a very busy year for people because there are a lot of things that were started in prior solar return cycles that come to fruition all at once when you have a, um, a full moon in your solar return chart for that year. So there's like a lot of moving parts and a lot of things that are all of a sudden coming up. And it's kind of like, you have to either continue to nourish it. And, you know, then you can start to kind of harvest the fruits of your labors, or some things are coming up that are maybe, um, the results of actions that were taken, maybe, in a way that we're misguided or that just aren't working out for you. So there's a lot of pruning going on around that time as well. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Um, and then the third quarter square would be um, you're taking action to divest of certain things, right? Like that's, you're deciding, okay, well, this is what happened at the full moon, right? And now we're at the final quarter square where it's like, okay, we're winding back down, we're getting rid of the things. And now we need to kind of go back to the drawing board once you get back down to that new moon energy. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So that is the sun and the lunar phase. Um, so what's next? What's the next thing that we should be focusing on or looking at when we're evaluating the solar return chart? 
So the ascendant and the ruler of the ascendant and the house placement and whether or not it's also making aspect to the sun as well, um, I find has actually been super important for a solar return chart. So if it's not making an aspect, there can be some kind of a little bit of a disconnect there with that. Mm -hmm. um, I have noticed that in my solar returns that I've done for people, uh, but the ascendant, what, what sign is rising at the time of the solar return, what the ruler of that sign is doing, the aspects that it's making as well. Um, so that's going to carry significance for the solar return uh, too, right? Absolutely. So we want to look at the ascendant and then the planetary ruler of the ascendant, which basically is the ruler of your rising sign. So for example, if your rising sign is Gemini, Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Therefore, you would look at Mercury's placement in the solar return chart as being extra important. Yes, for sure. Um, and then the angles after that. So the ascendant and descendant where they are, what those planets are doing is important. And then the MC and the IC are going to also be super important and what those planets are, are doing. So that's going to give you more context and more mm -hmm. uh, information about what's going on for that solar return as well. Yeah. And specifically with Midheaven and IC uh, themes, right? Yes, exactly. So Midheaven, you guys, is your career, your public reputation. Um, it has to do with the energy you're putting out there into the world for public consumption and what kind of in mass people see uh, coming from you for that year. And it also has to do with your relationship with people in positions of power and authority and things like that. Whereas the IC is what's going on behind the scenes. And so the solar return IC would show kind of the the developments involving your home, your family, your roots, your ancestry, your relationship with your parents, things like that. So similar to the birth chart, um, except it's not a replacement for the birth chart. It's just showing you what's going to be happening for those themes for the year ahead. Yes. Yes, definitely. Thank you for that. Um, and then other things to look at too would be the lunar nodes, the house placement of the lunar nodes because because that's going to give you the places that are kind of going to be disrupted or there's going to be other changes going on there yeah. um and stellium so three or more planets in a sign if there's a lineup of planets in a particular part of the chart you want to look at that because that's going to show an area of emphasis and an area that you want to look at for the solar return as well yeah absolutely um, and then I do have a note here about eclipses in mm -hmm. the solar return chart. So if you're having a solar eclipse or a lunar eclipse in your solar return, that's going to be super important to look at because that's going to be a year that's more karmic in, in general. And there's going to be directions that are going to be switched. There's going to be something that's going to come to light that's going to um, put you on another path or continue on the path that you're on. Absolutely. Yeah. The eclipse years tend to be big milestone years when you have a solar return with an eclipse, um, regardless of whether or not it's a lunar or solar eclipse, regardless of whether or not the eclipse is even super strong, it could be a partial eclipse. Like that person is going to have a year where that year is like a milestone year where they remember that as the year that this, that, and the other thing changed. And looking at where the eclipse falls in the solar return chart gives you context for that. Yes, definitely. And so it's, that's super important to consider as well. Yeah. Um, and then the extra note that I have, which is kind of what we're going to be doing towards the end is looking at the comparison between the solar return and the birth chart. And so when we look at this, if you look at the solar return in comparison to the birth chart, and there's more than just the solar return happening. Um, and also if the angles of the chart are the same as the birth chart, there's mm -hmm. going to be an extra emphasis to do with the transits that are happening at the time of the solar return. So it's, you, you can look at it um, as an event, but also as a transit to the birth chart and what's going on there. So what do you mean if more than one thing is happening at the solar return? Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, so if a person is having a solar return and at the same time they're having another planet come back to its natal position like Mercury or Venus or Mars or Saturn even, like any of the planets really, that's also another planetary return that's happening at the same time. And so that brings more emphasis 
to what's going on in the solar return and how it's hitting the birth chart. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll see that happen more commonly with the inner planets because they tend to follow closely with the sun. So Mercury, Mercury will do that a lot. But when there's like a whole bunch of them at once and like you look at your solar return chart, you're like, that's weird. It almost looks like my birth chart. <laughs> that, that's yeah. usually a, a momentous year. <laughs> and when I see that, the way I've kind of come to see it in my brain, right? How my brain operates is that you have each chart is like a gear in a clock, right? Mm -hmm. You know how you need all the gears interlocking in order to make the clock work. So it's kind of like your birth chart is the is the main gear of the clock and the solar returns and the planetary returns and all the other you know charts that we can cast are other gears interlocking and unlocking potential in the chart. That's that's how I see it. I'm, yeah. I'm just kind of that way. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's a good visual. Yeah. Um, but as you said earlier, the birth chart is the main chart. It trumps all other charts. There's nothing that's going to replace the birth chart. So that's kind of the key thing to look at. So you can look at a solar return, uh, or any other re planetary return chart or any, um, you know, lunar return or anything like that. And, but it's not going to replace the birth chart. Nothing's going to replace the actual birth chart and using your birth location, um, not a relocated solar return chart or anything like that. Like you want to use your birth location, I find is more accurate than uh, relocated as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I found the same. Yeah. Because sometimes it, sometimes it can be correct, but, but most times I find it's not at all. Yeah. All right. So, so um, yeah. let's get into, I know you have an example here that's kind of interesting. <laughs> I do. And this is a chart that I have, a solar return chart that I have used in uh, TA sessions for the Cosmic Academy. Um, and so for this, it's going to look a little bit different, uh, the chart type, just because I am using Astro Gold versus Astro.com. Mm -hmm. And so the difference would be you're not going to see the R for retrograde planets. Instead, the planets with the numbers in red are retrograde yeah. and the planets with the black numbering uh, next to them is, uh, they're direct, right? So there's a lot just of wanna... retrograde energy going on here, especially, well, <laughs> yeah. Mars is kind of the main one. The outer planets are like always retrograde. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so here, this is the solar return itself for this person. And so we can go back to the notes that we had at the beginning, where the sun is and what the sun is doing is the most important thing. So we can see mm -hmm. that the sun is down here in the fourth house. And so we can tell by that, that this is about home. This is about family. This is about property, uh, place of living, things like that. The aspects going on to the sun, uh, specifically that I would look at, um, the opposition to Chiron, like that's, you know, that's not one that I would say is like a, a big theme that's going on for this year. Um, but it is kind of like something happened prior to because Chiron is also retrograde. So is Mars in mm -hmm. that opposition, uh, uh, that there's a revision going on with their career. There's something there that is kind of uncomfortable that happened that they need to kind of release and let go of or yeah. rectify in some way. So just prior to this, they did um, step back from something in their career and the sun can have associations with the career, even in the, um, like even in the solar return. So there's something going on here with the home, with the property. The moon is also in a really nice trine with the sun. So this is a waxing moon. And so this is not quite fulfillment, not quite completion, but we're getting there, right? Mm -hmm. Because the, the moon in Aquarius um, is in and a really nice trine with the sun in Libra. And so this is a growing, this is you're doing something, you're changing something and you're, you're taking the next steps and it's going to be easier than say the first quarter square that just happened. Yeah, absolutely. Right. <clears throat> so then the other part is that the moon is also the ascendant ruler because this person also has cancer rising at the time of their solar return. And so the moon in the eighth house, making a trine to the sun, this is really positive energy, even though the eighth house can kind of be um, a little, 
a little intense at times. Um, being in trine with the sun is actually really nice energy for the moon because it's um, having that trine is supportive to the moon, even though the sun is in its uh, fall position. So that's also happening, but we can tell that there's going to be transformation going on because the moon itself in the eighth house can talk to transformation and even body transformation too, because this person did um, go through like a physical transformation during this solar year as well on top of the other things that were going on with the property. And so the moon as a general significator is also property and home. So having the moon in the eighth house is kind of another um, transformation going on with the home and the property as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, and it says here that she started paying off student debt, which is an yes. eighth house theme. That would be a big thing for that year. Oh yeah. And it was, however, um, it was not recognized by the government for whatever reason until last year. What does so that mean? I haven't looked so she started paying it off, but during this time frame, there was loan forgiveness or uh, loan, like you didn't have the to forbearance. Pay. That's still happening. They keep pushing it back and pushing it back. <laughs> definitely. Now it's supposed to be in repayment in June, but it, it won't be. Um, who knows what that's going to do? But yeah, I, I, okay. So it was because of the um, the extended COVID forbearance thing. Yeah. So she started, she continued to pay it, right? Like she, she was like, no, I don't trust this. We're just going to keep yeah. paying. <laughs> I don't trust it either. <laughs> they're supposed to forgive 20 grand. And then they're like, oh, by the way, now that the elections are over, we're not doing that anymore. Good luck. <laughs> so yeah, that's, um, yeah. Good luck with that guys. Yeah. Yes. But anyway, it shows up in her birth chart that she, you know, there's a big theme here that has to do with debt and it's positive, right? Because there's the moon trying to the sun and it's a, a waxing trine, like you mentioned before. And so therefore it indicates progress. Yes. And so definitely a lot of progress, um, especially on the home front. So the other point um, that I wanted to make is that the MC and the IC, they are not in the fourth and the 10th house. Um, but there's definitely kind of a commingling of themes when it comes to the actual 10th house and the MC and the IC and the fourth house and the IC ruler. So Mercury is in the fourth house, but it rules the IC point in this chart specifically. Um, and so it's at 29 degrees. So there's something that's being finished and being finalized for this year when it comes to, you know, the home, the property. Um, and it's kind of, it's kind of interesting how it all played out, but so the IC ruler also in the fourth house. So there's definitely more emphasis on property and on home as well with that. Can I ask a question about this chart and this person's experience? Yeah, sure. Um, was this person in partnership at this time? They actually were married the February before this chart, before okay. the solar return. And how was her relationship for this particular year with Saturn and Pluto in a conjunction square uh, Mars retrograde for the solar return? Well, um, there were some hiccups. <laughs> there were definitely some hiccups. However, part of how this played out is that their partner changed jobs halfway uh -huh. through the year as well. And so there was kind of a weird upset with that. Um, that makes sense. And also, yeah, so there that went on, that happened because there of, you know, this was during 2020, there were the lockdowns, the mm -hmm. job that um, their partner was working at uh, decided to make all kinds of crazy rules. And they're like, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do this. We're going to find somewhere else to work. And they did. Um, oh, good. So it yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, it, it seems like there's a source of tension there. I was just curious, but you don't have to, you know, go in, into yeah. any more detail. Well, and also she hadn't changed her name by the time this rolled around as well. Okay. So she was deciding whether or not she was going to change her name. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So that was also happening. Um, but we also have Mars up in the 10th house being retrograde, right? So she yeah. had just stepped back from a portion of her business just prior to this solar return. 
Um, and so there's a revision going on with her public standing and public reputation as well, right? Um, and also there was, that caused a little bit of tension with her clients specifically. Okay. Um, just because she decided she wasn't going to take on any more clients, she wasn't going to take on any, um, because her, her physical body um, was starting to have issues. Okay. And they were starting to become chronic. And it had to do with like the structure of her body, right? She's over six foot and she's a massage therapist. So there's a lot of like leaning over a table and it wasn't conducive to her back health specifically. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, So, yep. So that was happening. Um, And she decided when this, like when COVID hit, that's when she was starting to take a really big look at what she was doing, whether or not it was sustainable. And so there was, there are some long range goals and plans that she decided she wanted to change. And so you can see that with the 11th house and Uranus um, with that square to the moon, like the moon is, is the chart ruler is, is indicative of her and, and what she's doing um, for this. And so she's changing her long-term goals and what she wants to do longer term with her business and what's going on there as well. Well, and also the on self of being that. in the sixth house, like wanting to let go of something in your day-to-day work life that isn't serving you or working for you anymore. And that's pretty, yep. pretty spot on yeah. there too. <laughs> and that grand trine between Venus, Mars, and the South node, that's really nice. Yeah. So that's really nice. Um, nice. And so that's, that's the other thing that I wanted to get to is the North and the South node, definitely letting go and releasing something to do in her career and what she's doing every single day uh, for her work and and for her physical body as well. Absolutely. So that's that's definitely and that that Venus trine is really nice too. Um, and so Venus also being the dispositor of the fourth house. So Venus rules Libra. Venus being in the second house for this solar return um, has to do with money, right? So spending money on the home and on the property as well. So I thought that was quite interesting with that really nice exact trine and sextile to uh, the North and the South node as well. So it's almost like a really nice faded direction that she's moving in. Okay. And yeah. And so then the other part is building, she built a Himalayan salt cave in her basement. And so I, I thought that was quite interesting. And I had to do some research on this one um, because I'm like, well, what what's like pink salt? Like what rules over that? And so in an encyclopedia that I have, um, the, uh, what is it called? The uh, Encyclopedia of Medical Astrology. And so Saturn actually has rulership over uh, the salt minerals in the body. According to this, mm-hmm. you have to jump a little bit, but I found it quite interesting that, um, you know, Saturn in the seventh house retrograde in a square with Mars being retrograde, that there is something that is going on there um, in terms of the, the salt cave, right? And then the sun be having rulership over the fourth house or not having relationships, sorry, the sun being in the fourth house. Yeah. I oh, I like your I, little- I oh. realized I could put little arrows. I should have been doing that the whole time. It's like a new oh, thing. Oh, that is so awesome. <laughs> I'll can, if you guys are watching, I'll continue to put little arrows on the chart as we go through and talk about things from here on out. <laughs> that is so cool. I love that. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so I thought that was pretty interesting. And actually, um, so being a salt cave um, and- mines and all of that Saturn also has rulerships over that Mm -hmm. um and then Pluto obviously like there's also a a co-rulership with um mines and like diving into the earth and all of that and the fact that it's in Capricorn um I thought was quite interesting for how this uh played out for her yeah absolutely yeah so that's what I have for the solar return chart Cool. Um, as well as I, I did just notice, I didn't talk about the doctorate. So about a month prior to this, um, solar return happening, this person finished their dissertation and their doctorate in holistic medicine. Um, they, they're, it's different though, because they can't call themselves, um, like an MD because they're technically, they didn't do clinicals. Mm-hmm. So 
but what they can do is they can um, call themselves like a doctor of or something like that. Like there's there's a specific um, term that she has to use to call herself to let people know that she has gone to school for medicine uh, in particular, but she can't diagnose or treat people or anything like that. And so that has to do with that midhaven in the ninth house um, of Pisces and then Jupiter also being on the descendant there as well. So that's tangibly, she finished her doctorate program. Nice. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So how does this play out in this person's uh, birth chart? Yes. So we will get to that now. And I wanted to put in the picture of the salt cave because I thought it was really cool. Um, little image there. Yeah. So the inner wheel is her birth chart, right? So, and we can see that the ascendant and the midhaven so all four angles of the chart are in the same signs for the solar return as it is for her birth chart. So this is significant. This means that you want to look at it as definitely more of a transit to the birth chart and see what else is happening. I love that that does that. I'm just, I'm clicking it so people can get the, see what we're talking about. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, so there is that. And we can also see at the time of her solar return, she's also going through a Venus return as well, very, very shortly within like a day or two. So that's emphasizing the money, um, money spent on what it is that she's doing on the home as well. Mm -hmm. And then her natal Mars um, also is with Venus. So I found that quite interesting. Uh, with Mars being retrograde and it's in, in a really nice trine to yeah. Mars in the 10th house retrograde. Yeah, absolutely. So changing how it is that she's making her money, what she's doing to make her money um, and her public, public standing and public reputation and all of that as well. What about this uh, uh, nodal return? Yes. So that's another thing too. She's also going through a nodal return. So if she wasn't on the direction that she was supposed to be going in nodal returns, and especially in uh, solar returns for the year ahead for the birth chart, this is pretty powerful as well. Um, because it's showing her that this is where you need to go. This is definitely what's going to happen. This is how it's going to happen and all of that. So Having a nodal return is firmly placing her both, you know, as a transit and in the solar return compared to her birth chart, um, placing her on the path that she needs to be on and what she needs to be doing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is incredible. There's a lot going on here. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for sharing this chart with us. <laughs> yeah. And I did want to share uh, one more thing um, just because it's kind of because she is night born, right? So mm -hmm. Uh, the moon is her sect luminary, mm -hmm. as we learn in the Cosmic Academy. And this is kind of like a bonus timing technique. So when you're looking at solar returns, if you want to kind of find out when things can possibly play out, yeah. you also want to look at the lunar return as well. And so this is just after her nodal return, right? You can see that the nodes have, have gone through and, you know, done their conjunction and they're starting to move on. Um, but also, you know, the sun um, in the ninth house, definitely shining a light up there. And the lunar cycle that it's under is a first quarter square. So taking action on some things, right? Yeah. And so this happened February 20th of 2021. And this is actually when within this month of her lunar return, this is when she purchased the items for the salt cave. That is interesting. <laughs> yeah. And she's also at the time and, you know, the angles are pretty close to being the same. The MC is in Aries and the IC is in Libra, uh, but the ascendant and descendant are the same as her birth chart. Um, and she's going through a Venus opposition and all of those planets in Aquarius are oh, in really, nice it's the culmination yeah. of what started at her Venus return at the time of her solar return. Yeah. Eighth. That's so interesting. Yep. So, so I thought that funny. was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
right. and then the trine that those planets are making to the moon and uh the nodes as well I thought was pretty pretty nice yeah interesting well there we go guys so this is how you kind of start to pick apart the solar return and the lunar return is there anything else you want to add before um we sign off from this presentation nope that's it so I will stop sharing actually <laughs> All right. all right. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much for being here and for sharing all of this and for teaching all of us today. This has been super exciting. You're always a very brilliant teacher and your presentations are so clear and so interesting. Um, if you guys have questions, let us know and let us know what you learned in your aha moments that you had uh, during this presentation down below. Where's your solar return sun? What's been going on for you? Um, and if you want to learn more about solar returns, lunar returns, annual perfections, secondary progressions, transits, house rulerships, how to read a birth chart, all the things. The Cosmic Academy of Astrology is open for enrollment. Um, the Academy is, yeah, 20% off right now. And you get three bonus courses in addition to your enrollment. So you get a course on uh, relocation astrology, electional astrology, and a deep dive into how to deal with difficult energy in the birth chart so you can help yourself and your clients more effectively. And we now have a certificate of completion that we're offering and we're waiving the fee for the certificate for anyone who enrolls in the month of June. So we're super excited about that. Um, so hopefully we'll see you guys or some of you guys in class. And in the meantime, uh, take care and thank you so much. And again, thank you so much, Shanna, for being here. Yeah. Thank you again for having me. All right. We'll see you guys later.